Hi, I'm Matt. I'm 10 years old. And someday I want to be an inventor. I've always liked puzzles and putting things together, but never really knew exactly what it takes to make a final product. So I got an opportunity to go and meet an actual inventor. His name is Joel Glickman, and he invented a really cool toy, Kinex. This is all just so amazing, it's so cool. How did you come up with this idea to actually make Kinex? Well, Matt, I was at a wedding, so I was kind of sitting there while the music was going on, and there were drinking straws. And I started bending them, and it occurred to me that if I put a connector together with the right length straw, I might have the basis of a toy. Well, all of this looks like it's come a long way from straws. How long did it actually take you to make Kinex into a real product? Well, the straws didn't work. But it gave me an idea that if the points of connection, the connectors, didn't move, I'd be able to build things that were really strong and really complex with the same kinds of parts. So did everyone think that this was going to be successful? Not no one knew, because in order to, to build anything, you needed all of the 22 basic component parts, so we had to wait a year from the time I designed it to the time all the parts were made. But once all the parts were made, everybody in the factory started building things, from windmills to ferris wheels to tanks to cranes to sailboats, anything that they could imagine they could build. How did you decide on the name? Sometimes the name of a product is just as hard to come up with as, as the product itself. So I thought about it a while, and then I decided that I wanted a name that said what it did. So one part connects to the other part. This is all so amazing, but how do you actually make connects? Well, the process is fairly complex, but why don't we go take a look, and, and I'll do my best to explain it. All right. Let's go. So we went over to the place where they actually make the Kinex parts. It's incredible how much work actually goes into making these cool parts. Even before you can make your first piece, you have to design the machine and the molds. First designers create a 3D model of what the parts will look like. This lets them make sure that the parts are of exactly the right size and shape to work with all of the other Kinex pieces. From here, they make their own molds. These molds have to be just right so the parts are as near perfect as possible. By making and using these molds, Kinex can make sure that all the parts made today will always fit and work exactly the same. So parts made today will work with parts made 5, 10, or even 15 years ago. The parts are made by a process called injection molding. That's where they take little pellets of plastic and put them into a big machine called a press. There the pellets are melted into liquid plastic that is poured into the molds. Kind of like a jello mold, except in these presses, the machine heats the pellets up under pressure and then injects it into a mold. In other words, instead of pouring the liquid plastic like you would into a jello mold, here it's pushing it in under pressure. And just like a jello mold needs to cool, here they have water running through the Kinex mold also to cool the part. Then the part solidifies. It gets hard, and it's ejected out of the machine. This happens over and over, using different molds and colors to create all the different Kinex parts. Well, how many parts do you actually make? Well, we have probably in excess now of 50 different kinds of parts, whether they're rods or they're connectors or blocks or whatever, all that work together to make the Kinex system. So those are the numbers of different kinds of parts that we make. But every year we make almost two billion parts. Two billion? That's a whole lot. That's a whole lot. This is a pretty amazing process. So what kind of invention goes into it? Well, the neat part is what I've designed is the system of Kinex, and that allows kids to invent their own things, and that's really the fun of Kinex. When our designers build something here, one of our tasks is to make sure that our instructions 
allow a kid to be able to build what we've built. The parts are color-coded, so it's easy to match the real parts to the picture and the instructions. Do I have to follow the instructions? Absolutely not. The idea of the instructions is to teach kids how the system works. But you can build anything that you can imagine, really? anything at all, of any size, and frankly, of any complexity. Do kids in different countries build connects differently? The kids are kids all around the world. What they select to build might be different. For instance, in Holland, you might see a lot of windmills. In the Midwest, here in the United States, they might put a lot of tractors together. In Australia, they might make some kangaroos. Can I make connects move? Absolutely, you can make connects move. We have all different kinds of motors and gears and pulleys. You can make whatever you want move, and you can make it move in a variety of different ways, from simple, just have something going spinning around, to complex, where you have a whole series of gears, and they make things move in different directions with different timing. I got to see some really cool models. Everything from a simple car to a full-size grandfather clock that's been in museums around the world. There's also been constructed a connects bridge that you can actually walk on. What should I do if I have an idea for an invention? If you really believe in the idea, keep on trying, and eventually you might come out with something that's really neat. Kind of just like Thomas Edison, that light bulb. Exactly right. And how many times it took him to figure out the light bulb? Thousands. And someone asked him and said, well, you failed a thousand times. He said, no, I didn't. I just learned a thousand different reasons it didn't work. And then eventually I got it, and he did. Is there a secret to building good Kinex models? Once you learn how the system works, your imagination can be your guide. Whatever you can imagine, you can build it. I guess your imagination is the limit. You really can build anything you can imagine with Kinex. So there you have it. I never could have imagined how much actually goes into making a toy. Well now, after a lot of great information and a lot of inspiration, it's time to get working on my inventions. See ya.